and welcome to Squiggle Studio. This is the first tutorial uh, that I've done in the new studio and it's going to be on painting metallics uh, but mostly looking at creating ancient or old looking gold uh, or almost bronze uh, that I've done on the gash. Uh, the reason for this one is A, I was, uh, I was asked to do this by one of my followers uh, and secondly, um, metallics are one of those things that people either grasp instantly or struggle with a little bit mostly because the paint is different. Um, because it has metallic flakes in and is made differently, uh, it reacts to the model differently, it reacts to water differently. Um, so in this one, I'm just gonna show you a few tips for using metallics and also try and add a bit of color to your metallics, some normal colors like base colors, um, which can create some really nice effects. Uh, so it's gonna be in a few stages. The first stage we're gonna look at is just the base coat. Uh, and how you just prepare the model for glazes, highlights, etc. Uh, the, uh, the metal on this uh, isn't finished yet. Um, there's still a few highlights to go and a bit more shading. But I just want to show how I got to this point. Um, this would be probably a tabletop level for me, but this is going to be a tabletop plus, so I'm going to increase the shadows a bit uh, and just take it up a notch. Um, so the colors we're going to use, our base color is going to be. Uh, Negro gold. I don't particularly like saying that it's not a great colour, but it's, it's the darker gold uh, that Scale 75 do. Um, our shadow is going to be decayed metal. Our glaze is going to be rift green. And our highlight, when we get to it, is going to be the uh, Peer Dot Alchemy, which is a slightly lighter gold, but it's not too bright. You don't want to take, if you're doing old gold, you don't want it too bright. Um, so you see on my palette, I've got my base color of the dark gold, the shadow and the glaze up here. Uh, this stage, I won't have the highlights ready just yet. Um, and I'm just going to show how I start painting metallics. So the important thing to remember with metallics is, is if you add too much water, they're going to spread too thinly. And the metallic flakes that are in it will start to separate. So essentially, you just want to wet your brush and that's it. You don't want to add too much water in. I'm going to add a bit of the shading in and a bit of the green just to bulk it up a bit. And then all you're going to do is apply that to the model. Try and keep the same direction every time, keep it nice and neat and just get everywhere you need to go. The, this shoulder is going to be gold, the other shoulder has gold and bone on it. Um, but just to give it a bit of colour and a bit of change. But we're just going to apply the gold where it needs to be, making sure that we're not moving any paint that's already been there. It's an awkward model, so sorry if he goes out of frame for a second. He is a bit of a big boy. Um, so I'm just going to... And if it starts to dry out, obviously add a bit more water to it, but just don't go crazy. Just literally dab the brush in mix it back in. You can always add a bit more paint if it gets too watery. Um, so I'm glad you all liked the tour video. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy uh, with the studio. I'm really, ooh, <laughs> it felt good coming to work today. Let's put it that way, you know. Got the boy ready for nursery um, and uh, went from there and it was a, it was a good day. Um, yeah, so we're just, you see I'm actually adding a bit more shadow to the base coat when I'm doing this back area because I'm just preparing it for the shadows um, because it's going to be a bit hidden from the light anyway. Um, so as you can see where it's got a bit thin, it's, it's started to separate a little bit, but we can fix that. Uh, metallics are a bit weird. If you water them down too much, you, you're going to get that horrible... Especially with scale certified. Scale certified are some of the best metallics out there, in my opinion. Um, I, I think so. I'm still looking for ones that can beat it. I haven't found them yet. Uh, so this is the base layer. So it's just a generic coat just to prepare the model for how we're going to do it. And we're going to take it a little bit further in the next phase where we're going to block in the shadows. We're not going to go too harshly, um, but we're just going to block in the shadows um, let that dry properly. You can work with it wet, but this isn't this isn't a wet blending tutorial. I'll save that for another time. This is 
working with metallics and building up those shadows and lights um, and giving it a bit of tone to it. Um, but yeah, so that is the first part of base layers. And as you see, nice coverage all the way around, apart from you. I'm just gonna pick out the little bony bit. Sorry if it goes off frame, I'm still getting used, again, new setup. Um, but this is, when this is finished and edited and put together, this would be the kind of tutorials I'd be looking at if I ever went for a Patreon. Um, and I know we've spoken about it before. I would like to do it because obviously tutorials do take time. Um, doing the written tutorials do take time too. So I don't want to get off track topic too much. This isn't a paint and chat. This is a tutorial, Mike. This is a tutorial. Uh, so there we go. That's our base coat done. So we're going to jump cut to when this is dry and then we're going to start blocking in our shadows and our highlights. Okay, so we're back and the next phase, we're just going to be blocking in the shadows and doing some, just some basic highlights just to get used to where we're going to do our glazes and connect the two colors together. So we're going to start with our shading and we're just going to take decayed metal, we're going to take our base color, the, the, the black gold, I prefer saying that, to its actual name and we're going to really water this down really thin it out and i know i said not to but now we're doing shading we don't have to worry too much so we're going to really thin it out and we're just going to think about where the light's going to hit so if the, remember i'm holding on this side but imagine if the light's going to hit here we're going to work our shadows into these sections and what we're trying to do is create that curved effect that it's got so the light's going to hit just about here ish so we're going to fill in just along here don't have to be too delicate just get those shadows blocked in you can always correct it with the base color when you need to so you know we're going to fill in this little bit here and then we're going to work up to these sections no light's really going to get there. Look like in between the bone structure here. I'll do the back off camera because it, it's not very really easy to see. And just at this bit here. So we can intensify the shadows if we need to. Um, so what we're going to do is take that, I'm going to take our green that we've got up here. I'm going to really darken that down. And once again, we'll grab a bit more water. I'm going to walk it, walk that down once more. Really thin it out. Almost to, not quite a wash, but almost. And again, we're just going to dab it into the shadows. Now I'm working quite wet. You should really let it dry um, when you need to. Sorry about the noise. Again, all we're doing is just blocking in those shadows where we think they need to be. All it will do is just give the gold a bit of depth, and that's what we want. Okay, so there we are. So the light from the torch is actually going to help the torch lamp, is going to help me paint in my highlights. So we've done our shadows. That's the basics of the shadows. And the trick is, with this sort of method, is to work thin, super thin. Once you've got your base coat on, you can work as thin as you want. So here I've got my highlight, and I'm going to add in a bit too water. I'm going to add in my base color just to keep everything consistent. Always keep your base color. Always keep that mix readily available in your palette because you're going to. It's always good to come back to, and it will also keep consistency in your um, transitions. So we're going to work on the individual panels, and we're just going to gently highlight. The sections. I'm sorry if anything's gone out of focus, it's hard to. This is all still new to me, even though I've done a couple, it's all still new to me. We're just going to pick out where the light hits to give it the most depth. And you can see it's nicely starting to come together. So we're going to take the highlights up again using this mix here. I'm trying to keep the model in focus more than the palette, but we'll see how that goes. So again, I'm working quite thin. I'm actually going to change brush. 
I'm going to go a lot thinner on the brush. Remember to keep your, to dry off your your brush every so often, otherwise it'll get too saturated and you'll start losing what you've worked on. And again, we're just going to take those edge highlights. It's not really edge highlighting. It's more just trying to build up those transitions. See, just nice and gentle, and then just picking out certain sections. Now we can take the highlights up again. I'm not going to, as I say, this is this will be a tabletop plus. Um, so I'm not going to go too far anymore, and I'd be. Um, not sticking to my guns on, on, on levels, etc. But for this tutorial, I think the idea of, you can see how much depth just adding that shadow has given it. Yeah? Um, and that's just by working thin, working with a super dark color. We can, again, we can intensify it again. As it dries, it will darken. Um, but we can, again, I'm gonna mix more green in. You can just keep going back and forwards. So the benefit of working so thin is, is that you can create really natural transitions. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick out some of the, the underlying panels here and, and build it into these sections. So really work on those transitions. Um, so that's essentially the next stage, which is just blocking in those shadows. Uh, and, and starting to work a bit on the highlights. I think the highlights need a little bit more. So again, we're gonna take our lighter gold, water it down again, and we're just gonna continue work on those edges. All the way across, nice and neat. Nice thin brush. And again, so, I mean, you can see where we've taken it. We've just added a bit of depth to it, worked in some shadows, worked in some light, and that's essentially the next step uh, in doing metallics. It's, it's just nice and slow. Um, so what we'll do next is we'll wait for this to dry, and then we'll start glazing. Uh, you can use metallics for glazes. It doesn't really make much difference, but I'll be using a bit of green uh, and some of the darker metal just to blend these transitions together you'll see along here you can quite you know the light helps just for me to see where i'm going but you can also see faults in it as well you know nothing's ever perfect but this is this is my method of painting metal um so yeah this is the next step we're going to wait for that to dry and then we're going to start picking out a bit more of the highlights um and then blending in some green to really give it an ancient and old look at the moment you could probably get over this get away with custodian Custodies, custodies armor, um, with this sort of tones. But we're going to make it look a bit, a bit old, a little bit ancient, um, by using some. I may even bring in some blue to do the the verdigris. The verdig I think that's how you say it. Um, the way it turns slightly blue with almost rust. Um, yeah. So that's the next step, which is shadows and blocking in light, and just thinking about light and shadow and where your light's going to hit. So we're looking at coming straight down and then it's going to go across so we're creating that curve here and then down to shadow shadow and then a nice bit of light here but it, it still needs a bit more work um, but this is just just the basics um, and I just noticed a bit I don't like so I'm just going to go out. not wet enough just noticed a bit I don't like um, just here I don't like that bit I'm going to smooth that out a bit Bring it all together. Sorry about that. Right, so that's the next step. Uh, we're gonna let that dry as I say, and the next we'll look at glazes and how to make it look a bit more old and ancient. Okay, so time for the last section on this tutorial, which is just adding a bit of not flair, but something different to it to make it look either old or a bit of sheen to it. Um, and that's by using just plain basic colours, not metallic colours. So, say if you're doing silver, a purple can be a really nice colour to add to the mix. 
or to use afterwards or as a wash. Uh, and just to be clear, this is a method that doesn't use any washes. There are no washes used. You can add a bit of sepia at the end if you wanted to, and that will warm the gold up, uh, but you don't need to. Um, it's completely up to you. Um, so in this bit, I'm gonna show you just a bit about how I'm gonna glaze it, where I'm gonna blend these two together. Um, and if you don't know what a glaze is, let me put this down. To see. If you imagine a wash um, goes into the recesses and brings out the detail, a glaze, if you've got a blend, say you've got two blends, two layers, what a glaze will do is with enough uh, coverage, it will blend the two together and create a transition. So that's what glaze is supposed to do. So if you've got two natural layers next to each other, uh, it will, after a few layers of glazing, it will do this and it will start to blend together. Oopsie. Um, so that's what I mean when I say glazing. It's just a different kind of uh, a, a blend for this version, but it can also be used to tone. So for silver, you can use a blue glaze and it will give it that sort of uh, power sword look to it that you want. It's a nice, simple way of doing a power sword, actually. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my base mix, which is this one here. Uh, I'm going to thin it down again. I'm going to darken it down just a little bit. Just going to get the right look that I want. And then all I'm going to do is where the transitions are. Sorry, I'm going to go up a bit. I'm just going to gently apply it. Like so. You don't want a lot on your brush. It's just enough to create, to stop the blend looking so obvious. here as well just smooth that down a bit bring it down into the shadow and then you, it just helps with the transition so it's quite simple I don't need a lot of glazes on this one um, it's just to, to bring it together so the next bit is um, making it look a bit old a bit ancient and for this I'm going to be using our rift green um, from Scott 35 I'm going to thin it nice down again almost to a wash and you're just gonna be don't have to be sparing with it but just consider where you're gonna put it so I want to put a bit here into this shadow and I want to put maybe a little bit underneath and a this will intensify the shadows but B it will just help to give it an aged look um, which I think really works with Nagash because the fella is old and we're just going to think about where we're going to put it just to create a bit of tonal change and we're going to add a bit here down the bottom and into these intensify a little bit in certain areas so when we come towards the shadow we can start to intensify and bring it into here don't go over all the shadows you've done otherwise you're going to ruin the look uh, that you've done the hard work you've put into those to those shadings and transitions um, but on some you could just make it look a bit more obvious with about the green take a little bit off and you again you're working pretty thin you're not working with a lot on your brush and we're just gonna Give it a bit of a an old look just by working sparingly and blending it into the natural colours. You can see where I've done it on the arm. I've used the green to emphasise the shadow. Um, I hope you can see it. Uh, and if you feel you've done too much, I feel I've done a bit too much on that top bit. I'm going to go back to my base layer and just blend it out and just clean it up so you know it doesn't matter if you make a mistake that's what your base colors for um, and then we can go back to our highlights if we want to we can add a bit more on our highlights still using the green I like to keep the green in um, because it keeps everything together and I'm gonna just blend that back a bit a bit too bright So that is essentially my way of painting old 
looking metal, that old looking gold, sorry. Uh, and it's just, it takes away some of the brightness. It looks bright now, it's because there's a 1600 watt lumen shining at it. Um, but yeah, and it's just a simple method of using a non-metallic color um, to take away some of the sheen, but to also give it a bit of depth. And if I can try and sort of show you what it looks like together. So that's what, it, you know, you can see the different, you can see the highlights, you can see the shadows, and you can see where the green is, and it just gives it a bit of depth. Um, so yeah, um, that is a brief tutorial, I think. I don't know, maybe, I, I don't, let me know if you think it could have gone into more detail. Um, obviously this is how I want my tutorials to look eventually but I can always do it I'd love some feedback um, whether you thought you know was I going in and out of focus was I going off camera was I talking too much um, and did you learn anything I mean that's the most important thing did you do you think you can do you think this method is is, is simple enough or too or too easy um, you know um, so let me know any feedback is really good uh, so yeah I'll get this edited and hopefully put up today or tomorrow um, but yeah that's the first I suppose real video tutorial I've done um, and I, I think it went okay um, but yeah let me know let me know in the comments uh, anyway uh, I've been Mike from School Studio and that was the uh, tutorial for aged gold and also painting metallics take care bye bye